So I read a couple things in June, which I'm pretty happy about because I'd been in a reading slump for like eight months. I hadn't read a book since last November, basically. Finally opened the floodgates on that and I've been reading a lot since then and really enjoying the stuff that I've read. So I wanted to just make a video talking about what I had read and both share my thoughts and maybe just give you a rec if you're also in a reading slump or if you just want to check out something new. So I have eight books that I read last month. Uh, seven of them I have physically and then one is just a manga that I read online. But I want to talk about all of them. For the sake of conciseness, I'm going to limit myself to only talking about each for a minute. Otherwise, I think this video would be one really long and two really rambly and just kind of uninteresting so i'm just going to mini review them talk about things i like about them the basic premise and then who i would recommend it to so yeah also sorry in advance for any panting that you hear because i have a live studio audience that is really loud okay so starting off nw by zadie smith i have never read zadie smith before this and i feel like this is a really good starting place if you're trying to get into her she is super popular, but I hadn't read anything by her, so I'm glad I did, because this book was really, really good. Uh, this is the book that I broke my reading slump with, and I super enjoyed it. It's like a tragic comedy that follows the life of four people who live in a city called NW, and it just kind of goes through all of their perspectives as their lives intersect, and they play different roles for each other in their lives as a whole. Uh, it's not told like in chronological order, so it's really cool to see events happen more than once just from different perspectives and like getting a fuller picture about what's going on from like each person's point of view. Uh, the language is super poetic, super lyrical. There's a bunch of like imagery and like elements of poetry within it. I found it super, super cool and I am really glad I read it. I would pretty strongly recommend it, especially if you're into slice of life or just coming of age, kind of managing adulthood character study type of books, because that's definitely what I felt it fell into. The next book I read is Confessions by Kanae Minato, who is a Japanese author, and this is a really popular book. I was looking for Japanese fiction that was written by a woman, and this was highly recommended or highly revered. I read it, didn't super love it, but I do like elements of it. I think the structure that it's written in is really interesting. It's written kind of indirectly through like diary entries, like letters of correspondence or speeches. So everything is kind of a monologue from a different character's perspective. So every chapter you get a different side of the story in a murder mystery, sort of whodunit character, biopic. It's, it's a lot of things. Uh, the book is really short, however, so I feel like that is both a plus and a minus. If you want something that you can get through fast, definitely pick it up. If you want like a slow burn sort of mystery, this is not really it. It's more of like shocking, like play by play, like very punchy, like reveals. But um, I liked it overall. I didn't dislike it. I don't regret reading it, but it's not my favorite of the things that I have read. The next book I read was The Princess Bride, and I liked this a lot more than I thought I would going into it. Uh, I'd already seen the movie, like most people in America, because it's really popular, but if you like the movie at all, definitely read the book, because I now hate the movie, retrospectively. I think it does such an injustice to so many different aspects of the book, like the narration style, which is super witty and dry and smart and funny, and these constant interjections from the author themselves talking directly to the reader, like pausing the story to like break the fourth wall and talk about how they edited or translated or cut stuff out. You'll get to a chapter and it'll just be one page of the author saying, hey, this part sucked, so we're gonna skip like three years when the book gets good again, and then it just continues from there. Um, it's really lighthearted, it's not meant to be taken seriously. I thought it was really easy to get through and really entertaining. So if you want something that's not super literary, super critical, and just kind of easy and fun to read, check it out because it's better than you might think. The next book I read is My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshfig. I have another video on this channel where I talk more directly about that, like I vlogged my reading experience of it. But um, if you don't know, this book is about a woman who takes a lot of prescription drugs to try and sleep through an entire year. And she thinks that after the year is up, she'll be like born anew and all of her problems will have left somehow, which sounds ridiculous and it is meant to be taken as such because this book is very much a parody, like a satire on like that mental health wellness space, on art, on consumption, on kind of privilege also, because being able to quit your job, inherit a bunch of money, and like sleep through an entire year is very much like a luxury, as much as it is like a detriment to a person's like well-being. 
So there's like an interesting dichotomy at play. Uh, the book is very darkly funny. I'll leave it at that. I think that it was a really good book. I enjoyed it a lot. The further I get away from having like been in the reading experience, the more kind of nitpicky I can be about like certain aspects of it. But I think the book is very easy to read, very easy to get into, and very easy to appreciate. And the last book book that I have started reading, at least, I haven't finished it yet, but I started it in June, and it's A Little Life, which is so good. Like, so good. I can't super get into it because I'm not even done with the book. I'm only like 300-something pages in, but it follows the life of like four people who all live in New York and how their lives and friendships like intersect with one another, and it is another like tragic comedy, slice of life, like very dark subject matter the trigger warning for this book would like cover the entire back there's so much trauma that is being unpacked in this book but i am super liking it like so much so much i will save like thoughts for later because yeah i'm gonna want to talk about this at length so i'm not gonna even attempt to put it into like one minute um really good going from something that i did like something that i did not like is chainsaw man which is a manga by Fujimoto, and I'm pretty disappointed because I had high hopes. I've read all of Fujimoto's other stuff, and it's also just very popular right now, and there's like an anime adaptation of it coming out. So I was like, this is gonna be good. Was not. Uh, I just felt that it was very generic, very uninspired, and didn't really do anything new for me. Um, the premise is that there's a race of good and a race of evil, and the protagonist has an accident and becomes half good, half evil. Yeah, it's pretty generic. It's been done to death, and what does Chainsaw Man provide outside of this vanilla package? It has a good art style, I will give it that. The character design is also cool, but it just felt kind of overly violent, overly gory, with no real substance behind it, and then the main character is also such a loser. They're a teenager whose only motivation is wanting to have sex, and it just came across as weird and also lame. Um, yeah, I gave this a fair shot. I wanted to like it, but I just didn't. I got like 40 chapters in, but I am not going to go back to it or continue reading it. Uh, it's my first DNF of the year. So last but not least are two works by the same person, Pink and Helter Skelter by Kyoko Okazaki, who, in my opinion, is criminally underread. Not underrated, because I feel like people who have read her stuff like her stuff but not enough people have read her stuff, in my opinion. So Pink is about a call girl, a woman of the night, who has a pet crocodile and loves to buy things. Surprisingly political, Pink is very much about like glamorization, indulgence, and consumption, and sex, and coming of age. But at the same time, this is just like super aesthetic and like cute. So like if you don't want to be like capitalism, like literally, if you don't want to be like capitalism, <laughs> then you don't have to. But if you do want to, there's there's enough there for you to like dissect. Super aesthetic. I think that the art style is really charming and cute. I think the writing is nuanced and that there are a lot of topics which if you want to dissect it, you will be rewarded for. But if you also just want to read it like casually, it's also just fun. Like on its own, it's like slice of life. It's like about like coming of age, about romance. It's a good time so it's also super short like it's just the one volume 20 chapters if you have some free time and you're like mm, sounds interesting give it a shot and the last book that i read last month was helter skelter also by kyoko okazaki this book was so good it's about a woman who is at the forefront of celebrity and kind of her grappling with identity as she's being phased out by younger prettier people she starts taking these like corrective surgeries to stay more beautiful at the detriment of her own health and her own well-being and it is pretty overtly like commentary like both socially and politically on a lot of themes of like the tie of womanhood to beauty or the commodification of the body or even just ownership of your body along with what you owe an audience as a celebrity i think it's super well done because it manages to address all of these topics without being heady or without being academic or like hard to read it's really engaging really easy to get through but it's still like rewarding whether you're like already into manga i think it's a good deep cut if you're not into manga i think it's really accessible and i recommend it if it sounds interesting to you check it out and that's all of them that's all the books i read in june and my thoughts on them so yeah hope you enjoyed goodbye